So today I will talk about Modbus. So Modbus is normally used in industrial process where it's a common protocol among RTUs like we have temperature sensors, flow meters. As you can see in this window, here we have the TCP Modbus and here we have the Modbus RTU. Here it's based on 485 network. It's a differential communication. What happens is that we have two wires which is in parallel with these devices and they are all connected. What's Modbus? Modbus is a protocol that we use to exchange data between PLCs and devices, mostly our RTU devices. Remote RTU stands for remote terminal unit which is like one meter which is here and also we can have level temperature sensors we can also control the speed of variable speed drives for air blowers or for a motor so this is a setup of a Modbus network here we have the LAN here we have the Modbus RTU we also have remote data acquisition modules to monitor this level. Let's say in a hotel, we have several air conditioner. From a main computer, we can control each air conditioner. Each air conditioner, we give an address. That is, let's say for room one, we give address one. For room two, we give address two. And for room three, we give address three. And as you can see here are the two communication lines, that is the, the two wires, that is A and B and they are all connected in parallel with each one and then this cable goes to a Modbus gateway. Why I'm using a Modbus gateway? It takes the information from the RTU, that is these devices, and it passes the information to Modbus TCP. That is, from here you have the LAN Ethernet cable which goes to our SCADA or to our PLC so that we can control all the fine calls from a central place. And also note that we have N of line on the communication line. This register is for impedance matching. That is, whenever the gateway is transmitting data, it ensures that the data is transmitted properly and received properly by the gateway. Modbus is also used in Internet of Things because Internet of Things is a common system now that is we use it to control system on the internet like in this example we can have energy meters display that is the power the current and the energy and we also can have the trend all these data are being logged using the modbus data modbus protocol it's a master and slave protocol that is we have one master a master can be a plc or a scada the slave can be the sensor, that is temperature sensors, flow, level, and all this information will be sent to the master. So we typically have two types, that is Modbus TCP and Modbus RTU. Typically Modbus RTU over Ethernet. Typically in a plant we can use it on the class C network because we really have more than 254 devices. Normally now we use Modbus TCP. Ethernet is found everywhere now. The data can be easily transferred from one location to another location via gateways or normally sometimes we have devices which are Modbus Ethernet directly so no need for a gateway. And then we have the Modbus RTU which is commonly used like in all sensors. So on Modbus RTU there are some parameters that we, we should change. It, it depends on the controller that is like we have baud rate, parity bit, the maximum length is 1.2 kilometers. In fact, this distance also depends on the speed of the transmission and for the number of nodes is 255. But on each, I will say on each segment, we can use only 32 devices because this is limited by the 485 transceivers. So this is how we send data from a slave and to a slave. So we have a Modbus master. This will send a request. Let's say this one is a temperature sensor the Modbus master will send a query with an address that is this one is address one so the slave one will respond and these two the fact that the message is addressed to slave one these two won't reply for it to address slave device number two it should 
send address number two from the mode bus master then slave two will write to the mode bus master so this is how a setup is done for several energy meters so we set up an address on each one address one two and three and this is connected to the mode bus gateway and here we have the ethernet to exchange information on mode bus we use coil discrete inputs input register and holding register in fact these are memory registers let's say we want to command a moto so we write in this register that is we can read and write this one is used as a feedback let's say if a limit switch is closed or open so this will we will write to one x register and here is input register which is float values float or word so this one is for level sensors for energy meters let's say we want to know what's the voltage what's the current what's the frequency all this information can be read from free x register to note down this one is a read only register so that we can only read from this register and then we have the four x registers so this one is a holding register on this one we can read and write that is we can read a value and we can also write a value let's say we want to to change the set point of a room we will write to this range of registers the 4x so this is a typical SCADA plant for a treatment plant so here we are using Modbus to have the status of pumps and level monitoring and the flow and we, we can also give command to the pumps so all this can be based on Modbus or it can be on another protocol also so this is just an example of what Modbus can do so this is a controller which I have used for my project this system is completely on Modbus so we have the PLC here which is here we have the Ethernet communication here we have the Modbus RTU this is on Modbus RTU here also we have a temperature sensor on Modbus RTU these two we have the 485 lines and this goes to the Modbus gateway which is here and this HMI talks to the PLC via this switch and also via Modbus TCP this module monitors the level from an analog sensor and from here we have a network cable which goes to the switch from the switch it goes to the PLC I hope I have been able to explain to you a brief of Modbus I will try to make a detailed video of Modbus in in some future videos so thank you